So this is the view, this is the uh, board, and this is where I'm going to start. And as I mentioned in the um, keynote, the thing that I do to start a lot of times is a, a direction suggestion. Um, so just a little bit of Gamsol on my palette, like this, and not like dripping down, like don't overuse it, like just enough to make things mobile and fluid. Um, and I usually just take like a little um, titanium buff because it's, it goes away. But what I like to do here um, is like cut the blankness a little bit. So if I just do things like this um, and, and be, you know, kind of random, but also kind of not uh, with them uh, and, you know, just sort of like give myself a suggestion of where things are going to be. You can get as, as sort of complicated or simple as you want. So in other words, if I, I'm not drawing these out first with a pencil uh, and filling them in, what I'm doing is the closest I can get to that really would be if I were to do this um, and, you know, kind of a little bit of a horizon, maybe a suggestion of um, some perspective or something, but that's about as much as I go with that. I don't really go much further. I don't, I don't think you you can't if you don't want if you want to, but I usually don't. But what I'm doing here is in an abstract way, just giving myself like something to to break the blankness and to start, so that I I don't feel like I have to, you know, be scared of blank paper, which is can be intimidating, but also so that I can see like this is rhythmically going this way, this one's going this way, this one's going that way. This one might be a little straighter. This one might be, um, you know, a little diagonal. And this doesn't mean this is the top of the cloud. It doesn't, it, this one is, this one, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that. What it means is rhythmically, this is where this is gonna, um, this is sort of the, the direction that this was gonna take. Um, and it's just a way to start that gives you less intimidation uh, and gives you kind of a framework to get going so that you don't feel like you're um, in the middle of a big sea of white and have no idea what to do with it. So even if it's just a diagonal line showing rhythm of the, the composition, that's fine, that's good enough. Um, Next, what I do, like I said in the keynote again, is that uh, I sort of pick a key. Uh, and that's a real general definition. Um, and I know if you're an advanced painter, it might sound a little like hokey. Um, but when you're starting to think about what color does and how you feel about it and how you work with it, um, you don't, you know, some people see this over here, all these blues and, and like start mixing them. That could end up being a car wreck. And I think that it's important to simplify as much as possible. So in that sense, like if I'm gonna start this painting here, I'm just gonna use one of these right now. I'm just gonna use um, the cerulean. And I, when I modify it, yes, I can modify it with anything on here. But what I'm gonna modify it with only right now to start is white. So again, if you're an advanced painter and you can use a little orange in it to dull it and all that stuff, like that's great and we'll get there. For now though, when I start as a block in, simplicity is the key here. So I like to be simple with it. I like to just know uh, ahead of time, I know I'm gonna go into this and I'll glaze it. I'll make it, I'll make it something that's way more interesting than blue out of the tube. I know I will, but for now, when I start, I want to just almost flatten it in if I, if I feel like doing that. And the same thing then with, I'm going to use a different brush for this. I'm going to use the same, and just to keep a blue, a blue, and to keep the neutrals and neutrals. I'm going to use Portland Gray Light. Um, and I'm going to use this to block in the same way this. So again, you can see my brush stroke. I'm not being super precious and I'm not modeling, you know, like with a little tiny, um, articulation of a brush, uh, every little part of the cloud or anything. What I'm doing is really using the scratchiness of the brush, the fluidity of what the little touch of Gamsol does to here. I did touch a little linseed oil to it as well, um, but just a touch. And I'm just sort of like stacking in big shapes. That's a shape, that's a shape. And um, now I'll take another brush, which again, I'm gonna use a real, uh, like a haggard looking uh, brush. I'm not gonna use something that is 
um, soft in this situation at all. But I'm going to make a little earthy mix over here. And for now, this, the, this little side note here of raw umber, sap green, oxide of chromium, those can go like miles. And I usually like to take them for that ride. So sap green and raw umber, just a little watery mix. You can see here, hopefully, it's not super opaque. Um, it's very liquidy, uh, but it's not running down the canvas or the palette. Uh, it's enough liquid for it to be mobile. And I kind of even dab it on a paper towel sometimes. Uh, and I just sort of try and think about suggesting a perspective. Like I'm not gonna get out my ruler right now. This is not that time in, in what we're doing or this is not the project to do that. Uh, but I am gonna kind of suggest, you know, going back in space somewhat and suggest um, like a like a sort of almost grid something out so that I can follow you know masses and then the rest of that is dark middle light all the time like represented so I I like to think about context a lot here and I like to think about how much I can do with the most minimal amount uh, and the most minimal amount um, is light against dark dark against middle middle against dark all of those things together uh, and that's what I'm doing here, just sort of laying down that framework. Uh, and that's a block in. <clears throat> the other part of this is that I can say, okay, I, I think I might want something that's just a little bit more weighty in the dark and the cloud. So I can take a little Payne's gray, mix it with that sky color just slightly. And I can just go for the like sort of belly of this cloud uh, and and give it just a little weight to it, some some... Uh, a low note, so to speak. So, and again, that's context. As soon as I hit that, then the thing that was just that that light or that middle tone just becomes contextually related to this. So now this looks lighter because there's a dark next to it. It's not that hard to see that. And then in the same way, um, I can go in with, let's say I'll just go with white right now and a little white with a little bit of that Portland gray light and not so watered down. Uh, and if I just take wait, if I just take white and I go block this, you know, move the white right up into the top of that next to um, this stuff, even if I go exaggerated like this, you can see that all of a sudden there's three part harmony because the white acts as the high note, the gray acts like the mid note, and the blue Payne's gray adds, acts like the low note. And that's enough for me to do a block-in. That's, that's usually a phase one block-in. That's plenty. Yes, I can go in more. And yes, I can develop it way more than this in the first shot. But for now, that's going to be the bones that I build on. Um, and I'm going to leave it at that because then you can also leave yours like that because it's the concerns here are big shapes and a relativity of dark, middle, and light. Uh, some of the best things happen when you let go of thinking that it's going to, you know, it has to be a certain way. And that's where uh, my favorite place to, to paint is. And that's what these open up for me. So I would suggest that that's why, again, multiples, because um, there's something about the idea that I can move from one to the other and not obsess uh, that is so liberating to me as somebody who struggled with obsessing over one all the time that I, uh, you know, I kind of became pretty addicted to the idea that I can move from one to the other. I can set things up and I can, you know, have a real clear vision of it working out without having a clear vision of exactly how. And that's painting. That's a la prima painting to me. That's you know, you're always in a sense of discovery. You're always in a discovery mode. You're always getting to a place where it's partially set up from the the move you just made to the move you're going to make. It's sort of a, a, a place between those. And it's it gets comfortable, even if you're super uncomfortable in the beginning doing it. So just keep that in mind, knowing that it, um, there's a lot of possibility for remedies for things that might look like they're awful. Uh, and that's what we're going to work on in your one-on-ones. When you do these and you block them in, your, your concern is going to be the big shapeness of everything. And the, um, the way that you can 
avoid, like your job in the block ends is to avoid too much articulation, too much explanation of what's going on. Your job here is to be general, effective in your general treatment of, of shape, and to set yourself up for the next round where you don't have to go back in and redo everything so that you can paint into the thing that you started. And then you can free yourself from the decisions that are gonna trap you into perfectionism. And then you can all of a sudden be in a place that you, where you surprise yourself, where you think, I didn't know that I could paint that way. I didn't know that I could paint that way and, you know, keep mental health uh, right. And I didn't know that I didn't have to lose my, um, sense of you know like what's good and what's not good uh i can just sort of lay things in and then i can set myself up to figure it out as i go uh, and the more you do this the better that becomes as a practice and the better you become as somebody who trusts your own self in your practice uh, and that was again that's like a huge thing for me personally in this was that these were so hard to do for me that i used to when I shared a studio, I used to hide them because I didn't want my studio mate to see them. I didn't want anybody to see these. Uh, like the idea of that version of me coming to see this version of me where I'm doing it on camera for people is insane. Um, because back then I used to think that it had to be a certain way. It just had to be perfect. It had to be like it just born that way. Uh, and the, um, the process part of it was something that I felt like I was just like always missing. Uh, whereas now, I enjoy it. I enjoy, like, come see how crappy they look in the beginning. Uh, I, I love that. And I love the idea that I can be really in tune with the beginning stages of the painting, even if by the end, they don't look, it doesn't look like that. Uh, I, can, I can make this into whatever it evolves into and, and, do it in a way that I feel really good about the process and not feel like I'm overwhelmed with uh, technical concerns. Uh, and nothing, not that there's anything wrong with technical stuff, it's just that it can bog you down uh, and these can liberate you from it and you can end up being, um, you know, introducing yourself to a part of uh, your process that you might not have ever known and that's how it worked for me. So that's why I like teaching it. I'll go back into later and some of them feel like they're a little bit more fleshed out. And I know that I'll, I'll work on these transitions later, uh, but I also don't want to, you know, I don't want to kill the brush stroke that is immediate. Uh, I want to, I want to keep the sketchiness as much as possible. So like the, another point I can't stress enough is, um, do, like don't over blend things to death so so that you um end up like over refining everything too early like the brush stroke is your handwriting uh is your is your is like the the way you're introducing yourself to the subject matter and the process at the same time and like kind of enjoy it and enjoy enjoy the discovery process of what it feels like to make just this preliminary architecture that you're going to then build upon and enjoy also the idea that in a day you can come back to this and look at it and be like, Oh my God, I did not remember that I did that stroke, that brush stroke, or I did not remember how chunky that paint was. And I'm so glad I left it, which is, I do that almost daily. Um, and this was, this is the practice that helped me do that. That helped me be uh, pretty, um, accepting of the things that I used to eliminate, like brush strokey, chunky brush strokes and stuff like that. I used to get rid of those like crazy because I felt like I had to refine everything to a, like the finest blend possible uh, and eliminate the brush stroke. But like when I look at the, some of the ones that I did that are just big chunky brush strokes put together next to each other, God, it's just like what paint, is just once like the paint seems happy when you do it so this is basically what happens when i go back and forth i did this a lot and i do this a lot in my own 
um, studio practice where I just take a picture and I do this over and over again because I like to see the role of what colors are doing. Uh, what's the, you know, like what are the blues doing? Right now there's only really blues and the earth tones, but uh, watch these two here and look at what red and orange notes, uh, look at what happens to them when they get desaturated. The one on the right on the top, that's just the same gray as the, as the blue cloud in front of it. It's just a lot of the same value, colors just d being the, the thing that makes them distinct. Um, and that happens a lot with reds and yellows. You can look down here uh, and pay attention to that and how that'll change today. Even though I'm in muted scale, um, you know, like I want to be mindful of what the value is doing just as an inventory, just as a way to say, uh, like, what's my next step here? If I want this to come out, if I want this to recede, like, how do I go about doing that? And that's what I'm going to try and figure out today. This is sort of the, the middle of the beginning, so to speak. Okay. So here, what I want to do before I, uh, go in with anything is I just want to, I, I want to assess like what what's going on here what can i use in this to distinguish the high end from the low end from the middle end this is all pretty middly and pretty muddy um, so if i just do this and start adding um just another value on top of what i have there then what i have there that was a high sort of becomes a high middle and now i have a high next to it. It's not that much higher and I'm going to use the mids a little bit more here, but for the most part, what I did was just recalibrate it a little bit and have it look like a little closer to dark middle light, but I am going to anchor this. And so uh, I call this an anchor note, uh, because it anchored, it sort of like brings in the weight. Uh, and I'm just going to use Payne's gray here, just a little bit of Payne's gray, and I'm going to thin it out because I don't want to go full throttle with it. I just want a little bit. And I'm going to do it pretty transparently. I'm not going to trowel it on. Uh, I'm just going to reinforce a little bit of what I have there and paint into it. Uh, but just, I want to deepen it and give myself a little more of a of, of weight underneath um, that belly of the cloud. I'm going to take some of the sky color uh, and just use it in the gray because it, we're painting something that's you know kind of translucent here. Uh, we're, we're going to be able to see through this for, for whatever that's worth. And so using some of the sky uh, color, uh, in some of the gray color is going to make us have that translucent feel. And I'm just going to make like, this is all pretty middly. Uh, if I go and put something that's a little bit dark next to something else in here, suddenly there's a relationship and suddenly I can just distinguish one thing from the other. And that's kind of the, the way that I'm going to approach this, which is just as dark versus light, um, and not overthink what kind of tree am I painting or anything like that. I'm just going to just proceed with the general block in kind of energy, but also, uh, uh, what's this against that? How can I make something lighter or darker or warmer or cooler against what's already there? And then the last thing I do for phrase two on this one is going to be to deal a little bit with this flatness. Although for a sketch, I, I keep falling a little bit more and more in love with seeing brush strokes like this. And I tend to, I used to cover this up, but I tend to leave a lot of the swirliness. I'm going to not here, but I tend to do that. So if the more mindful you become of brush stroke and how much you want to use it, the more during your blocking, you can really choreograph this to be something that you're going to save, you know, for the rest of the painting. For now, I'm not doing that. For now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of radiant turquoise, um, and a little bit of cerulean and a little bit of white. Uh, and I'm just gonna, well, I'm gonna go a little further than that. Use titanium instead. Uh, and I'm just gonna give myself like a, a, a lighter and slightly brighter version of this blue. I might even go a little further. Um, and you can tell I'm using this silver, the Grand Prix, and it's very scratchy. And so that's a lot of the secret here. If there's a secret is that I'm not like globbing paint on. I'm doing what is kind of like almost like what a dry brush is when you're doing watercolor or temper or something. I'm just sort of scratching it in and you can see that I'm using some of what's underneath it and not painting completely over it. And that's a way to get some control and a way to, um, 
you know, like use the thing underneath it without having to then overpaint and overpaint um, chronically. But I'm gonna do, you know, a brush stroke that's pretty much about this circular motion, which I do a lot. Uh, I really, rather than do this all the time, rather than go like, you know, really brushy, uh, going like this kind of gives me um, some leeway to integrate. I can, I'm, I'm, it's easier for me to integrate these without having to be blendy. Uh, I can just sort of scratch into them. And especially when I'm at this phase, it really helps because there's barely anything here. So that just gives me some, something to build off of. And when I go back in with something that's a little bit lighter, like it's all kind of integrated and it feels pretty natural and it feels like an organic shape and not something that's uh, over blended and overthought. This is more, uh, this is sort of the marriage of my um, indirect and direct painting technique and, and feel that I really just kind of love both of them. Um, and I use them both in this. Next week, what we'll start doing is talking more about glazing and, and the indirect methods that really help um, define the finished look and define some of the changes in tonality and temperature that are that are sort of like the thing that people you know like the, the really lovely seductive part of the ending of the painting but for now um this is thin paint and it's and it's controllable uh but it's not like washes which is an important distinction so thanks for asking that is that i'm yes i'm painting this but when i put this note down i'm kind of seeing how this all changes in accordance to it and that's really what i mean when i say um like it's like a holistic process i don't mean holistic like uh you know, like in the new agey way. I mean, holistically, literally, like it's about the entirety and it's about trying to um, see what happens when you make one move, what it, how it affects the rest of it. And it keeps you really um, in the momentum that the painting is developing. So I want to start, I know I'm going to go into full colors, uh, but I want to just make that note a little bit more with the muted scale since I'm, I don't know, it just feels like it could use a little of it. And I'm going to make this uh, muted scale color a little transparent. Uh, I'm going to use the medium to, to make it more transparent and I'm going to wipe it on my towel. Like I do this again, like after I did what I did on my palette and then I can go back into this uh, and I can use it like this, which is, um, it's almost like a dry brush, you see? Like I'm, I'm not putting it on like a big glopping uh, opaque thing, but I'm also not, like it's not a true glaze. Uh, I'm kind of just scratching it in and the brush is really helping me do that. And I can then, um, you know, paint into that and make things a little hotter uh, with a little bit more of the Naples yellow light. And I can just bring that um, shape at the bottom into a little bit like kind of make it into smaller shapes and get ready to bring it into some other relationships uh, that are more highly chromatic. So, but the, right now, the, the um, Naples yellow light and the burnt sienna are gonna really hold the orange spot. So I wanna start building that into some of the light to consider it sculptural. And, and even if it's the horizon and it's not something that's like higher up on a cloud or something, I just like to be able to really state that, especially on a sketch, I just love um, the bold application of a highlight. I just, I just love it. I just I think it really does a good service to what we talk about when we talk about light and color and the relationship of both to each other there. I really think that's a good move when you're thinking about how you can use not just the color but the paint application to convey what you want to convey. So um, a lot of what I like doing with that blue is creating a little bit of like a gold light. Uh, so and without making green. And that's the really important part that is something to keep in mind when we're doing this is that I don't want green. So but I'm going to use radiant turquoise and a little titanium and a little liquid. Uh, and I'm going to just sort of scrub into it and then use a little bit of Naples yellow light, enough to just scratch into it and not make it green. It's hard to not do that. I don't know if my arm's in the way, sorry. Um, but I'm gonna just do this to just incrementally move my way upwards 
And um, without like adding necessarily too much dark, I want to do that. It's just a good reminder to yourself to not overwhelm the practice of this with the perfectionism. Remember, we're practicing practice. Like That's a lot of what we're doing here. We're practicing how to practice. So it's going to take maybe more than one board of sketches for you to really get it. And that's okay. So it's, it's, that's the practice. That's how we're going to get good at it.